All right, ready to transition to the next one? Yes. All right, Ryan, <laughs> you want to lead it? No. Well, this is great because we've built up a lot of like momentum here. So yeah, now, we got like, 243 going... people in the in the chat right now, so this is going to be a fun conversation. You should open it, and then I will pour fuel on it. Provide yes. <laughs> <laughs> can I share a screenshot? I, I mean, you can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I. All right. Let's look. Here. Is this from YouTube or Facebook? Yeah, YouTube. I already have them. I'll show you. Okay. 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 So yeah. Let's so do... the short of it is, is I happen to, to see this one. Oh gosh, let me. I gotta make my screen bigger to be able to see. Yes. Okay. So I follow um, Aaron and just saw some posts on Facebook and then on. I'm gonna on get YouTube South Park off. Like... So we don't get demonetized. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. You know, oh, I see. Um, <laughs> anyway, he made a post three days ago. He says, any lawyers in this group, specifically someone who can help me with a threat of litigation based on one of my reviews? If so, please message me directly. I know your time is valuable, but if you can help give me some guidance, it'd be appreciated. Uh, comments disabled for obvious reasons. I don't want to bring on any more attention that could make my life worse. Hope you understand. Um so I'm reading this and, and it definitely concerns me that a brand. To put it in context, we didn't know it was, we still don't know if there's any relation between the two. I should yeah. clarify that. But if, if there's, I mean, all right. Companies send me product all the time. Sofa baton. Well, hold on. Let's back up because we don't know what this post actually means. There's no. I mean, it's it's vague context. But, it is, but there's yeah. no context in the post of what that's about. True. Then he posted this. What is this the same day? I think this was the same day. Okay. And he says the designer at Tecton has raised concerns about my test methods of the Tecton Trobador, Trobador, mm -hmm. Trobador mm -hmm. speaker, yeah. particularly me not having the feet installed, which seal the through holes at the bottom of the speaker. The feet mm -hmm. were not provided by the gentleman who loaned the speakers. And I was unaware of these feet until Tecton informed me of this in order to practice due diligence in my reviews and transparency with you all. I wanted to let you know that I am going to take my, where's that? Take my review down. review down while i investigate tecton's concerns and retest the speaker with the feet installed i will update my review as necessary i hope i have your understanding so mm -hmm. just to make sure that everybody is clear there is no <clears throat> direct reference between these two so i just want to make sure that that is clear for now <laughs> <laughs> yeah so a lot of you guys i mean you're you're mentioning in the chat i mean you've seen this you were aware of it you were shocked by his post um you know he's pretty sure i know who it is i've done this to other reviewers in the past um so a lot of you have seen this post and so you know it just it brings an interesting conversation you know to that and so i thought we'd just have a conversation regarding that and and uh, get you guys in the chat your thoughts on it as well. So let me post show a couple things here. Okay. And I Do think it. this is important. I did some research after seeing this. Mm -hmm. There are for, and I've never seen this before. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I've installed feet on many number of speakers. The Tecton Trabador actually have holes in the bottom of the speaker where the okay. feet go. There's not like a cap or anything. You can literally stick something all the way through. Mm. Okay. I, I did my research and you absolutely can. So there are really holes. It's not like he's just saying there's feet or whatever. Now, what not having the feet on there would do, I don't know. And this is where... I'd like to point out something because he is specifically mentioning the feet. Tecton, Eric behind Tecton is. Mm -hmm. But if you go look at this YouTube video and we fast forward, I think mm -hmm. it's like 537 right here. There's no feet on these speakers. Mm. Interesting. It's and you know what? Review, the you know what? Right this here. review is on Tecton's website. Interesting. 
and there's no feet on those speakers in the back. So how, why are we saying that the feet need to be on for a review mm -hmm. that may or may not have things said about the speaker, but if it's all positive, then there doesn't need to be any feet. Mm. So he's saying that the speaker supposedly was measured incorrectly. Mm -hmm. Like it would measure better. If but he would Steve have doesn't have any feet on his speaker. And somehow it doesn't measure incorrectly. It does the stand. Is that it's like screw holes or something screwing it onto the stand? I think the feet are on the corners, like literally right here. Because if you go look at other, let me pull up Tecton's website here. Let me get another tab. I think I not. I don't Tecton think you'll see it on their website, though. No, 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 no. Tecton speakers. There was another review. Yeah, and that's true. He says Steve doesn't measure. So Steve, is I know he doesn't measure. Subjective. But my point was that there. It's OK for somebody to give a subjective review. Right. But without the feet it, mm -hmm. and say something positive. Mm -hmm. But if you say something negative, it mm -hmm. then becomes a problem. Yeah. Right. That that's my point. Now I need to find um Tecton video review. Yeah. There's a part of the website. Here we go. So if you look, where are they? I think it's these. So if we look right here. And we, we go right there. So you can see they're in the corners. Mm -hmm. So they're not being covered by that. Okay. They're out here. Man, if look at that's you really where they are, right? So you can see on the bottom of the speaker mm -hmm. that yeah. they're out here on the corners because there's no other holes in the bottom of this speaker. So okay. this mm -hmm. should be open. Unless there's a plug that nobody knows about. So there's that. And how much I find really interesting. I just wonder like how much difference would that make in measuring how a speaker performs though? Well, Jonathan, you commented about this not yeah, too long ago. Private text message, but I, I don't think it's gonna change it very much at all. Yeah. Like you're talking about four quarter inch holes. It might change the are they sealed or ported? I guess they're sealed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unless you play it to extreme volumes, it's just going to act like more airspace. It's not mm -hmm. going to like it might change the bass frequency response a little bit. Like mm -hmm. I would I would guess that it might change it like a dB on a frequency response sweep. Mm -hmm. And you I'm might find the back you might hear it if it's totally sealed and you turn it up to very loud volumes. You might hear it maybe mm -hmm. like a chuffing sound, like a, a whistling sound or something. Mm -hmm. But we're talking like small little holes. And, Frankly, I'll be surprised. He's going to remeasure them. Good on Aaron for remeasuring them. I'd yeah. be surprised if it changes much at all. Yeah. So there's that. That, that, brings, that brings a question like, what happens if it doesn't change? You know? And if he posts his review saying, hey, I put the feet on, I measured it. Okay, here's the difference. Maybe it, maybe it's insignificant. Mm -hmm. Then what happens? You know, is a, is a brand going to go and, and still continue? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it seems odd. On that note, there's this. Let me make it bigger here. And Eric is the guy behind Tecton. Okay, so this is over on Amir's website. And this was posted <clears throat> Wednesday. Wow. All right, so this is public here. And this was posted about the oh, Where did that post go? There it is. This was posted about the Tecton Mlor. So Amir did a review on the Mlor. Okay, so that's one of his models. And Eric said it was measured incorrectly, and it's probably going to come to litigation. Mm, so everybody needs to hang tight. So this was on when? I think this was Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday at three. Interesting. So, so for a different is... speaker, he's threatening litigation. Well, maybe this is about the troglod door <laughs> you said it wrong you're getting sued no. i don't know um, yeah, yeah. whatever <laughs> trobador excuse oh, me jeez i kind of feel like maybe i should turn my camera yeah, off let's right get now. Off your <laughs> you're like, I put your ski mask on <laughs> yeah i do put turn on my voice filter 
<laughs> no, because he was saying a mirror measured. If you scroll up, two more right there. Stop. Um, da, da, da. Scroll up a little bit for No, it's right here. So, oh, a mirror you measured. Be stay tuned. A mirror measured them wrong. Yeah. So yeah. he's posting so he's about a mirror. Something that a mirror yeah. did. If a mirror botched up the measurements, then stayed exactly what he botched up. And most importantly, explain that Ryan keeps scrolling <laughs> when I was reading. Where were you reading? Right there. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, the top one he says. So basically, he's challenging. He's like, look, Mr. Alexander, Amir follows the CEA 2034 standards in measuring speakers. His tests and measurement methods and equipment are openly stated. If Amir, quote, botched up the measurements, then state exactly what he botched up. And most importantly, explain the scientific reasons of what the measurement methods ought to be when measuring your speakers and why the CEA 2034 standards doesn't apply to your speakers. Everyone here is eagerly awaiting for your reasoned and scientific engagement instead of a temper tantrum because your speakers measure poorly based on industry standards with soda measurement equipment. And then Eric responds, the facts are that he measured the speaker incorrectly. It will probably come to litigation. So everyone needs to hang tight and buckle the seatbelt. That's Michael's paraphrase. Interesting, but man... This he is should so, so, wild. so Eric should probably provide his own data that says this is what I measured and this is where it should be, and then they can compare and figure out what went wrong. And without that data from Eric, then it's just it's just blowing hot air, isn't it? I mean, really? I, yeah, but I guess have, the bigger question is why data. why does why don't they just come together and go, hey, I saw your review. Thank you so much for reviewing it. I've like you said, I've got different measurements. Can we talk about your procedure? Can we, and, and I don't know who has, you know, what him and Amir have, what their conversation has looked like. Um, but man, that just, it's just wild though. Well, <laughs> so he's saying just Jones correctly discerned how this speaker should be used. So. Hmm. I never saw the original review. I tried to pull it up on Aaron's audio corner, but it's been taken down. He did take it down, but I'm like saying I've seen it to see what was. All the so he says, mm -hmm. agreed. Just move on to something that is personally exciting to you and audio. Just Jones correctly discerned how this speaker should be used. So is Eric saying that he doesn't know any audio file that would buy a $750 speaker for serious listening? Mm -hmm. Did he just like poo poo on a big part of the audience or the buyer's buyer's pool? I don't know. Like, do you, is he effectively saying that you have to buy really expensive stuff to get a good experience out of something? And that if it's not expensive, you should just expect crap. Wait, that's just Jones that said that about $750 speaker, not Eric, right? Yeah, but he's effectively saying just Jones correctly discerned how this speaker should be used. Unless I'm not getting the full context out of this. Which maybe I'm sure. misunderstanding. I need to read it more, more in the full context of what's being said here. Yeah, mm -hmm. because he says that and then the Just Jones, the last reply is that he doesn't get what the overblown reaction is. This is admittedly an inex inexpensive speaker. So how I took that is that um, maybe it's sarcasm mm. because Eric just Jones is the one that's saying clipple. Yeah. So maybe. Sorry for coming off your face for a second, Rusty. That hurt says Aaron should just send the speaker back and bail. This was sent to him by a consumer. Like one of his, like a lot of times what happens is Aaron will get one of his members that says, Hey, I've got a pair of blank. I've got some per listen, some of the new per listen. I had a, one of my patrons even reach out and say, Hey, if Aaron wants to measure my per listen, I'm building my theater room. It's going to be a little while. He's welcome to, I'll send them to him. You know, so that's kind of the, um, you know, what happened here. So it wasn't the, from just, the manufacturer. I feel like I remember one time that Aaron said, um, Y'all hear Netco? No. Okay. Mm -mm. Um, 
if there was a bad review or bad data, he would reach out to the manufacturer before he actually posted the review. Yeah. Um, so in that thread, Aaron did mention that he reached out. It's in that thread that he reached out to Tecton and asked if there was anything he needed to know and didn't hear back. And I mean, in Tecton's defense or in Eric's defense, he probably doesn't see all those emails necessarily respond to everything. I get that type mm-hmm. thing, but but yeah. but Aaron did try to pre-initiate according to what he said okay. in the thread. He tried to reach out and make sure there was, you know, the communication was made before he did the review. Anything I, I need to know. I I don't think it's Aaron's responsibility necessarily to do that either. I mean, I don't think any reviewer should have to do that. Mm-hmm. If they're public, if the product is publicly available, I mean, he's measuring on a clipple. I mean, it's not mm-hmm. like he's yeah. doing a lot of this just willy nilly. I mean, the clipple is well regarded in the industry as the de facto measurement device. Mm-hmm. And I mean, take it up with clipple. I guess you're muted, Rusty. Well, also in that thread, when I was reading through it or glancing through it, was talking about how the review wasn't even that bad that Aaron no. did. So that's the part that's a little mm-hmm. confusing. Again, I wish I could see the review, but yeah, I don't think he was like barnstorming it or anything. Mm-hmm. I was just going to say it's possible that the measurement setup maybe there was a problem you know just um but in two different speakers using two different clipples i would know because of your are you saying but was it the same speaker no different speaker yeah the m lore which is totally different he's he's questioning two let's just call it like it is i'm two professionals in the industry that have professional equipment that have been doing this for literally decades i mean i know um, where is it at? Yeah, so that herd says Aaron isn't a spring chicken. He knows exactly how to run his hardware measurements, and he yeah. does. He knows the stuff. Well, and the response that Eric gives to people calling him out for measurements is, I've been blessed with 18 product of the year awards. I mean, a lot of these awards, guys. So if a he lot doesn't, of participation awards. So if he doesn't get an award from... A reviewer is that acceptable to well my point with this is that he's gloating about 18 awards instead of providing data like it was specifically requested people are asking yeah they're like provide your data so that we can settle this and be done Mm -hmm. but instead he just says well i've been doing this for 44 years Mm -hmm. here's the data or here's Mm -hmm. the awards Mm -hmm. you know trust me you know we're good yeah, I don't, I don't buy like that. personal data. I don't buy that at all, which yeah. is a big reason why I think a lot of us get behind companies and why we push companies that objectify data, their sure. equipment. Yeah. There's... So go ahead, Ryan. I didn't nope. mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Uh, well, I'm just curious ask. where this like leaves reviewers. Like, is this something mm-hmm. you've ever heard of before, Michael? Is this something that you've ever encountered or been nervous of in your own? I've never personally been nervous of this, but probably when I started six years ago, a very similar situation happened. I think it was with Ron from New Record Day and maybe what's the other guy who modifies the crossovers and stuff? Matt, um, not no. not from that place though. It, it was it was Ron's buddy. Um, I don't know. Oh my goodness, I can't even think of his name. Anyway, you guys may know him in the chat. But anyway, this very similar thing happened like five or six years ago. So, and it was like, hey, you measure my speakers wrong. And if I remember, oh, Danny Ritchie, thank you. So yeah, so it, I'm seeing a pattern. To be honest with you, it's like it happened before. We just saw two of them this past week within seven days, probably. It's like, I just don't understand that. Yeah. I I would say it looks like with this guy, it looks like he just doesn't like bad reviews and he throws a, he threatens legal action anytime something unfavorable comes out. So they can pull the, in hopes that maybe they pull the review, I'm assuming. Yeah, intimidating them to pull down reviews and bad publicity. And mm-hmm. and I don't know, because we've only, mm-hmm. well, I mean, we've heard part of the other side of the story here. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I don't. I didn't see the original measurements. I don't yeah. know if the test was done right. 
I would say just from the perspective of a person who has a company that makes products mm -hmm. um, that the like not just like the legal responsibility, but just the kind of the moral responsibility. If, if you're going to put review information out there, just making sure that it is factual, because mm -hmm. if you put bad information out, everything everybody sees the bad stuff but most of the time only about 10 percent see the retraction so i would hope that if i was making a product and michael was reviewing it he'd say hey i've noticed some anomalies before i mm -hmm. publish sure. this mm -hmm. you want to take a look at it and see if you can either help me troubleshoot it or reproduce it or whatever it is and give me a chance because People that are going out on a limb to build companies. And again, I'm not defending this guy. He looks mm -hmm. like, I, I don't know him, but it, it, he doesn't look like a pleasant person from, from just the forum post that you've shown. Mm -hmm. um, but I would hope that I would get the opportunity to defend my, maybe it was a setup issue. Maybe it's a customer issue. And if it's not, then I deserve the bad review. But people risk their life savings, you know, to create these products. So, you got to be careful with what you say and what kind of bad news you spread around, um, you know, and if, especially if it's unverified. So, so if I, and, all right. So brings me to the question. I don't do a lot of measurements. I don't, I don't have a hundred thousand dollar clip on machine. So I'm going to get a pair of speakers in. I'm going to share with you what I feel, what I enjoy, what I like mm -hmm. and dislike about it. I'm going to review this sofa baton remote. And if it's buggy, guess what? I feel that I have to let my audience know that, Hey, when I was setting this thing up, I got an error message or mm -hmm. man, this thing was flawless and it was just smooth and you know, whatever that is. And so should I be concerned as a reviewer, a content creator, making a, a, a video that, you know, I, I guess I'm just thinking, man, as a, as a business owner myself, if there's something wrong, you go to that person, you don't just throw out, Hey, we're heading to court. If you don't, yeah. shape up and i just man, I, well I and i feel like, as a re, as a youtube as a youtube reviewer you have a responsibility to call out things that are bad and especially if you're speaking right. to your own experience yeah. and that's non uh, like you can't question it like this was mm -hmm. your experience yeah um you yeah you should point that out because you're looking out for the consumers mm. um but like if it. you're slandering, and I always get these confused, libel and slander, sure. which, is, which is which. But if if you're just saying things that aren't true, then that's mm -hmm. just not right. Yeah. So I like what Reed says. It says the best response would have been, hey, Aaron, your measurements are way off or a mirror. Hey, we're not vibing. We're not getting the same things. How'd you run your setup? Let's have that conversation. Let's have a, a dialogue. Let's figure out what went wrong. And I promise you, probably both of these guys, I know Aaron, at least, I don't know Amir um, personally, but I know Aaron. If if somebody pointed out a flaw in something that he did, I just like in this case, he's like, hey, I'll be happy to review mm -hmm. it again. I'll be happy to rerun it. It's not like he's hiding anything. He's, he doesn't have malicious intent. Mm -hmm. So you're effectively saying that if any reviewer review something objectively and it's negative they shouldn't publish it they should approach the vendor first who i'm saying yes, rusty yeah i would say if if it's something where especially if it's a new product i would say you should at least reach out for support before you publish a bad mm -hmm. review yeah and question like okay i buy a mad br I plug it into the wrong port on the back. Mm -hmm. There's only two ports. I plug it in the wrong one. It doesn't do anything because one of them is a pass-through port. I publish the view. This thing's a piece of junk. Save you mm -hmm. all your money. It's a scam. Like, <laughs> we, you wouldn't want that. Yeah. You'd no. say, like, I should reach out to Ryan mm -hmm. and say, hey, is did I set this up properly? But I don't think it's the reviewer's responsibility to have to juggle the vendors in order to do that. What would be wrong with the vendor reaching out applying a public but nice response and saying, hey, we think this happened. Mm -hmm. You know, can you have a dialogue with us to see if we can fix that? You fix it. And then the request of the vendor may be, hey, can you just publish another video that says 
I did something wrong. Yeah, so same thing, different order, and I guess either one can work. The only downside is usually the negative part gets talked about on a podcast like we're doing right now, whereas the positive part doesn't ever get brought to light. Mm, depends on how you do it. It's not as much entertainment if it's if it's not you know controversial or you're not talking. It's not as dramatic like as a few people have said. Yeah, but some of my saying, highest view videos are definitely not controversial. Yeah, I'm not you know. saying you have to. I'm yeah. saying I think that would be a professional thing to do mm -hmm. if you if there's something that you're is questionable. Now, oh, if yeah. that if it is just the way it is, then mm -hmm. hey, facts are facts. Let them fly. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that, Chris. Yeah, so we've seen similar things, you know, just some drama, but man. Michael, you and I have had this conversation before, and I've had the personal experience with even just my little small world, and I know sure. you've had it a lot more than me, where you'll get a product in, mm -hmm. they want you to review it, but it's not something that you can give a good review on. Correct, yeah. So you contact the manufacturer and you say, yeah. I, I can't give you a good review. Do you want me to still move forward and publish this with what I feel, or do you just want to drop this? So and, what, and how does that well, play out? Sure. So there is, all right, there is an example. It's been many years ago. I reviewed a product and I was having issues. So here's what I do as a content creator, especially like when it's coming to electronics, because that's easy to tell. Okay. This thing is not acting right. Mm -hmm. I always reach out to the manufacturer and say, Hey, look, there's something wonky going on here. Like whatever that is if you hear a noise or whatever. And I do oftentimes give the manufacturer an opportunity to know about that in advance and ask, is this a known issue? Sometimes they say, yeah, we're working on that. It's, we know that, that some consumers are having that. Okay, cool. Just want to make sure it's not something on my end. Um, there have been times where think about it. We will get a faulty product. Product just is, is, I mean, you can get that with a car. You can get that sure. with an electronic, you can get a TV, mm -hmm. whatever. So I'm okay with a company sending me a replacement unit because I don't want to base my review off of a unit that could have got damaged in shipping. But and, as a seasoned reviewer, it's usually pretty easy to tell when something like that is going on, when yes. there's an anomaly happening yeah. that probably yeah, it's, shouldn't it's be a, there. This isn't normal, but I reach out to the brand. Yeah, to and I would totally do that. So, well, you know. But yeah. My point with all of this is that Aaron is not new to this. No, he's using a clipple, which takes a lot of this out of his hands. Yeah. And if he's finding something and Tecton is not new, I mean, it's mm -hmm. they've been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. If he's finding something, I don't mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm more of the objective side. I get the mm -hmm. wanting to take care of everybody, but I think there's also something behind what Aaron does where he's doesn't ask any vendors to send him anything. It's all him buying stuff, people like customers sending him things that they've bought. Mm -hmm. So there's no tie to the manufacturer. And I think he's comfortable enough in his testing methodology that he's not potentially worried about doing something wrong. And if he did, which he's potentially worried about maybe doing here, he issues a statement, takes, retracts the video, so that he can run a correction, right? And then goes from there. But I don't, I feel, this is coming from a consumer side. I feel that mm -hmm. if you're constantly working and troubleshooting things and anomalies that come up and then fixing them with the vendor, mm -hmm. what happened to everything and the customers that bought the thing up till that point? And mm -hmm. is the only reason the this is being fixed because there's the potentiality of a negative review coming with it. Right. Right. That's well, my problem with this whole thing. And I'm not say say I'm 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 with you. I'm like on, on the whole like looking out for the consumers. And if that is the design and the design is flawed, then yeah, you should definitely pun publish that. What mm -hmm. I'm saying is if it's something, and maybe it doesn't even apply to this situation. Like I said, I it looks like the characters in this, it's it's pretty clear who's who's who is in what role. Um, but if it's something where you think maybe it could be like Michael said, uh, is this normal? Is this expected? Give them the benefit of the doubt, at least give them a chance to explain if they don't respond, 
or they blow you off or they say, mm -hmm. well, that's just, it is what it is. Then, right. Hey, let it fly and let everybody know, do not buy. Cause somebody else said it. It's like, I'm concerned with, yeah. uh, there's not enough negative reviews. Yeah. Just saw something that. like that. Yeah. And I, I'll actually address that. Um, Tom says, I rarely hear reviewers give a negative opinion, which is disconcerting as well. So part of it, all right, think about this. I, as a content creator, almost like every, maybe not every day, but literally probably every other day, every three days, I get an email from a brand or multiple brands saying, hey, youth man, we love your channel. They've never seen my channel. Um, but they're like, we would love for you to review our Bluetooth speaker. This thing's amazing. It looks like a robot. And I'm thinking, I have zero desire to review that. Number one, because I've never heard of your company. Number two, I'm just not interested in reviewing Bluetooth speakers personally. Mm -hmm. um, what I tend to review are most of the time brands that I know. Well, okay, I'm going to keep bringing this back up. Sofa Baton reached out to me after Harmony declared, hey, look, we're shutting down, I think a year or two ago. And I reviewed their product. Go watch that review and you tell me, was that a positive review or was it a negative? Now, I'm not going to bash a brand, but I'm going to tell you, here's my experience with it. I try during my review. Here's what happened is I, I had everything. I had some issues with it. I was working with them directly. Their app, I had some issues with the software, the hardware I had some issues with, and I'm working with them. And then um, I end up, I'm getting ready to do my review. And of course, I want to record how to set this up. I'm trying to walk people through. So I'm like, you know what? I know what to do now. So I factory reset this joker, get it back to factory, install the app. I'm doing my recording. And guess what? Right stinking. I mean, in the middle of the, the video, the review, I'm walking somebody through and it's like error. And I'm like, isn't that nice? And then I, I fix that. We move on. I get another error. And at that point, I just get frustrated. I just kind of wrap up the review. Um, there have been... I don't want to say a bunch, but definitely there. I can point you to specific vehicles on my specific not vehicles, specific videos. videos on my channel that were not all rosy. All right. I've reviewed Valencia. Watch the Valencia video. I just posted. I like the chair, the new Monza, but I, I specifically, I picked up. All right. This kind of looks like it. They now use a aluminum piece. It's about this tall. And you got to put that in the cup holder and that's where your tray table goes. And I'm just thinking, and I even asked them like, Valencia, what's up with this? I went to put the tray table in the cubby. It doesn't fit. <laughs> like Valencia, this is your tray table that doesn't fit in your seat. What well, gives, you know? And so everything isn't positive all the time, you know? Now me being an optimist, I'm going to lean towards the positive stuff but I'm not going to shy away from stuff that I don't that I don't think could be improved with a future product. And one thing that's great about being a content creator and pointing out some things from a consumer's perspective is this is something that I would like to see different in your product. I've mentioned many times originally when I first got Valencia seats, I said, man, I would love to be able to have a memory button to where I could press and it lock in my settings where I sit every single time to be able to lean back at a certain spot, to be able to raise my headrest at a certain angle so that my eyes are always where they need to be. Guess what? Several revisions down the road, a couple years down the road, they introduced the Ultimate Luxury Edition that had that feature. Now, I'm not saying I was the one that convinced them to do that, but because we as content creators provide that feedback and say, hey, look, this doesn't work as well, or it could work better if you did this. There are some manufacturers that are listening to us and they take that feedback and they go, man, that's a great suggestion. Let's, and then they talk with their leadership and their design team and they figure out a way to implement that. So yeah, there are definitely some negative reviews out there, but the vast majority of the products that I choose to review, I got a pretty good chance these are going to be good products because why would I want to intentionally spend my time, my energy, not only using the product, setting up the product, calibrating the product, now making a video on the product just to tell you this thing sucks and you shouldn't spend your money on it. 
I would rather put my bet on a, a product that I think has a pretty good chance of sounding good, working good. It's going to be a quality product because I know the brand. Those are the products I want to review. And so maybe that's why, at least with my channel, a lot of the videos or a lot of the reviews are, you know, pretty positive, but it's not shy of negative for sure. So that's just my little. I think well, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put this comment up here because I think it's worth that's talking good. about. Okay. So Michael will know the story. Go ahead, the go ahead and read it. Michael. If you don't mind, read it because there are a lot of people that watch the podcast or listen to the podcast. So they don't sure. get the so benefit. Toya says leadership push the problem. And he's talking to someone else in the chat. The problem is litigation is expensive. So chances are whoever's getting threatened from a lawsuit. And I'm going to add a little bit there or they will just pull down the review and never talk about the company again. And that's a detriment to the consumer. Yeah. And so this is where it gets a little fuzzy for me. So Michael will know the store and Ryan and Rusty won't, but I got a projector sent to me from a company. There was mm -hmm. just a, a inexpensive Chinese projector that I was, they asked me to review. I looked it over for a few weeks. I had a couple of friends come over and look at it. We did some comparisons. They thought it would be equivalent to maybe a thousand dollar Optima or something. It's kind of what they said, frame of reference. The projector, I'm not going to mention the brand here, but the projector was not, it wasn't up to par. Like it was not something I could recommend to anyone for any mm -hmm. reason, because I don't, I, I don't think it hit the quality threshold. That would be a minimum recommendation for me. I would say you need to save a little bit more. You need to spend a little bit more. This is an inexpensive device, like three, two or 300 bucks. Um, so I didn't, I reached out to the company. I said, I, you know, like I said earlier, I can't give you a positive review. Um, and that was after talking to Michael to see how he kind of handled it. Cause I, 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 part of me said, just publish the review. And you know, you got these, these, they've got to be fake reviews. I mean, let's, let's be honest. They got to be fake reviews on Amazon. I mean, they're giving like five stars and stuff. I mean, like, that doesn't even make sense. Yeah. So, so part of me was thinking like, just publish the review. And this is like what Ryan's talking about. Like the chips fell, you gave me the device, just publish mm -hmm. it out. Is that a con? Is that a situation where I could get sued as a reviewer for giving a negative review on something because it's just opinion? I mean, and doing comparison side by side and showing like well, that's uh, where does that line gets crossed? If you don't publish it, which is what the way I decided to do because I talked to the reviewer, they just you know just decide not to publish it. Does that that's a def that's a bad thing for the consumer because all they see is those Amazon five star review type things. I mean that you know you see what I'm talking about like there's. To Ryan's point, if we if we're trusted reviewers and we're reviewing something that's bad, there's part of the mindset that just thinks publish the review, let the chips fall where they do. And the other part is where does that leave you in the in the lurch for this kind of situation where mm -hmm. somebody could come after you and say, like Rusty said, this is my my pet project. I've invested my whole 401k savings in it. You mm -hmm. you screwed it up. You know, now no one will buy my product because you reviewed it poorly. I'm gonna sue you. Like, mm -hmm. wow, like where well, does that well, what I'm saying, though, one distinction is if you reviewed it, not that you gave it a negative review, but if it was not true, like if there was if there was things in your review that were false, mm -hmm. right, like right. bad measurements or bad. And yeah, I know a lot of it's subjective. And if you just say subjectively, I don't like the way it looks, you know, mm -hmm. that you can't really argue with. But I'm talking if you were if you gave false information then you should be held accountable for spreading mm -hmm. false information. So mm -hmm. here's how I see this. I see both of your guys' perspectives. This, a big demonstration of this and how it can go poorly is the Linus Tech Tips cold plate review that was done on a GPU. And there was a startup company that was being done. And you guys can go, I, I think Gamers Nexus did a big video on this um, and other content creators have done videos on this and how Linus Tech Tips handled this. They effectively gave this cold plate review for a GPU a very poor rating saying, don't buy this. It's not worth your time. Startup company. This is you're just wasting your money. Mm -hmm. The problem was, is they installed it on a GPU that it was not designed for. And it was specifically communicated to them because it was a prototype. It must go on this type of GPU and they didn't do it. So they published a review saying it was terrible. And if I remember correctly, there may have been a retraction that effectively said in the comment somewhere that, hey, we got this wrong, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't remember if that happened or not, but that's historically previously how Linus Tech Tips would do their retractions, like their edits and things of 
hey, this was different. This should have said this. They wouldn't update the video. They wouldn't take a video down and republish because that would take too much money, right? Um, that is a way of doing it poorly, right? Mm -hmm. On the other side of this, I think it is very important. This is how I've done it at M-Wave historically. I think to get a very honest review from a, a really dedicated reviewer trying to go at the objectivity of things um, in measurements and data, you can't be beholden to a vendor or a Correct. manufacturer. Sure, you have to be third party on your own and buy the product on your own, right? Because then it's your product. You mm -hmm. own it. Um, and then I think it's also very important that it's conveyed in a very objective way. Look at how database did things. It was all data. It was all based on objectivity. There were some negative subs on there mm -hmm. that didn't do well. Mm -hmm. But I don't think a lot of the subs, I think he bought, if I remember correctly, he owned or, or, or were or loaned were from loaned other members. Sure. Yes. And I think that's really the only way that you can get an objective outcome from a lot of these. It's how ASR does it. It's how... Aaron does it. And Michael, this you're doing a lot of like opinion based stuff. So mm -hmm. you're targeting a totally different segment. Sure. Um, so I think it's really important that if people are going to do this, mm -hmm. that they do it objectively. And mm -hmm. I think that's really important. But I think it's also not their responsibility. That's what I was going to gonna say. Not their responsibility. And maybe I'm going to go a different direction, Michael. And it you may not, go ahead. It's not their responsibility to communicate to the vendor. That's not what I was going to say. Okay. Now, <laughs> the opposite side of this from the vendor's perspective is that this can actually, if the if it's communicated negatively, it mm -hmm. can work depending on how it is communicated from the vendor back to them in a positive light for mm -hmm. the vendor. It, yeah. If it is done correctly, how it is being done with Tekton, guys, this is my opinion, by the way, how it is being done with Tekton is not being done correctly. If yeah. this was communicated in a very open light that said, hey, I'm doing, I typically measure things with the feed on. I think this is what you could get. Here are my measurements that happen with the feed on, provide objective data behind them. That could have been really good, right? But instead, we're threatening litigation. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what happened in the Linus Tech Tips video is it effectively almost and I, I don't know the history after the video bankrupt this company mm -hmm. because they did things wrong so i think it is very important mm -hmm. if you're going to review these things as a objective reviewer that mm -hmm. you do them and have him some historical context and knowledge behind these reviews like what aaron and and amir do with their clipples right they're mm -hmm. very little that is uncontrolled in those environments with Clipple data. They both have huge backgrounds in mm -hmm. understanding about how to measure this stuff. So and how to do it properly. And how to do it properly. Mm -hmm. So I do think it takes a certain type of individual to be able to do this. This is not something that everybody should yeah. or can do. Um, but I think it's it there's positives that the review or the vendor could take from this. Mm -hmm. And I say that because I've been on that side of it, not from Mad VR, but from my flight simming stuff that. If you word things positively, you can totally flip the tables. Mm -hmm. And if the reviewer is doing something malicious, you can bury them. Because the public, though it may seem kind of strange, can totally feel how this whole situation is playing mm -hmm. out based on how both parties are acting. Yeah. And typically, mm -hmm. not always, but typically they will side with the appropriate party. I'm not saying it always happens, yeah. but in the cases that I've seen it happen, and there have been some very nefarious situations that I have seen and been involved with, um, with companies and things happening in the flight sim world, it was, yeah. if things are approached a correct way, yeah. things can work out, yeah. right? But this situation is not being done correctly. Yeah, in my and, opinion. And I'm seeing some people in the chat and you know they're basically saying that the problem with this tactic, if you would 
call it that, is it can definitely harm the company because people are like, I don't want to buy from a company yes. that is acting like this. Like, no. Where's where that coming from? Yeah. Um, and I think that's, there's some, there's definitely some fairness to that thought. But if you take this, how like Buckeye did, Buckeye did an amazing job of this and oh, you can yeah, go certainly. find his stuff on ASR. ASR reviewed something, mm -hmm. one of his amps, and there was a problem with, there was like some distortion or something being generated by something in the amp. Right. Buckeye very, Dylan very professionally stated, yeah. hey, can you, we investigate this further? Mm -hmm. They found the problem. He was very communicative throughout the entire process. Mm -hmm. Very communicative. And the public, the people that are on ASR, loved him for it. Sure. Right. Even Respecting. though there was a problem right yes. there, yes. him showing the willingness to then yeah. fix the issue, mm -hmm. have open dialogue and communication. People forgot about the problem. It didn't yeah. matter. You could mm -hmm. have problems in the future. It didn't matter because now they've seen that the willingness of Dylan from Buckeye to correct mm -hmm. the issue. Now they feel like their best interest is at heart. So this yeah. is what I mean that I don't think that the reviewer has to directly approach the vendor, a big part of benefit can happen from how the vendor interacts with the reviewer if something negative is uncovered or potentially misrepresented. And it's all about the professionalism, the objectivity, and how mm -hmm. things are communicated from both sides. And if done properly, it can be huge outcomes, even if the initial is negative, mm -hmm. it can still end in a positive, a very big positive potentially. Sure. So Aaron, appreciate you in the chat, man. He just dropped in. He says, hey, guys, just wanted to clarify. The review wasn't negative at all. Yeah, I did. I did contact the manufacturer before I listened to measure I, before I listened or measured the speakers. I was unaware of the feet being needed. They weren't sent. So again, these were sent, I believe, from um, maybe one of his patrons or maybe one of his subscribers. And he I said, I hadn't that. seen photos of the speaker on their website with the feet, Aaron, we, Ryan actually pulled up some pictures on other reviews of that speaker. Steve Guttenberg reviewed it and he didn't have the feet on, but yet that review is actually on their website, which is kind of interesting. And then I um, cor correlated that to another review that was on the website that showed feet that yeah. were not in the same place. So we looking at the bottom of the speaker, the stand that was holding up Steve's speaker was not covering the holes. So they yeah. were definitely open. Yeah. Cool. Hey, Aaron, I, I know, man, we, we just wanted to have a conversation around this because I saw your post, man, and my heart goes out to you. I, I think it's unfortunate. Um, and so, uh, but yeah, that's wild. He said, that's all I'm going to say, but I appreciate the input here. Back to packing for my move while I listen. All right, brother. Good to see you, man. Thanks for stopping by. Brian, to your point, I totally agree. If, and especially, and it's pretty evident in this particular case, <laughs> when you see how it was, uh, how the owner responded uh, unprofessionally, mm -hmm. you can kind of tell who's, who is who in this situation. And people are talking about, well, I wouldn't buy from this company regardless, just based off of how they reacted. Mm -hmm. And I, yep. I agree a hundred percent. Um, my comments were more kind of in general, not the, not the specific it. case, just yeah. in general, just trying to be as fair and objective. But sure. I liked somebody had a great comment earlier. I showed just for a second. It said, what that, was it? Um, said that I would, it should be reviewers that give said something like reviewers that give positive opinions of positive reviews of bad products should be sued. And I oh, agree yeah. with that too. Yeah. Like, yeah, 100%. We yes. need to be held accountable. And it, it should go both ways because yeah. if anybody that's not yeah. telling the truth should be cool. held accountable. And well, I and you should have to, I think you do have to state if the product was given to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, we mm -hmm. do. Yeah. You do, but how yeah. many actually do it? Well, and the same thing, <laughs> if, if, a video is sponsored. Like I'm going to be doing a video here pretty soon. It's a sponsored video. Guess what? First 30 seconds of the video, you're going to hear me say this product or this video is sponsored by such and such. It won't be a review because I don't do sponsored reviews, 
but I'll be talking about the product. I'm letting you know this product exists. It's a Kickstarter. You might be interested in it. If you do, go check it out. That's yeah, a sponsored video. This entire video. podcast is sponsored by Ryan. So go yeah. sue him if there's yeah. something you don't agree with. You don't like this? That's on him. That's in oh, AV. No. Put that on all the lawsuits. I've been, I've been on the before. other side of this. I think if you're open, honest, and transparent mm -hmm. about it, yeah, people, even though it's through the internet and a lot mm -hmm. of times through text, they can yeah. tell. Sure. Yeah. They can tell. And I, and I love these comments, man. And so I'm going to read these in case Aaron's still listening while he's packing. He says, Peter says, Aaron is so mature. What a guy. Um, and then someone else says, Mike says, Aaron's a stand-up guy and the type of person that you would want to know. And that's been my experience of him. Um, absolutely. Hey, bro, get back to work, man. You're still chatting here. He says, for what it's worth, I kind of poo-pooed Fosse's ZA3 amp. Two days later, I got an email from them thanking me for the honesty. Dude, I love that. That's the way a company should respond and letting me know that they were working on fixes and updates. That's the cool stuff. That's what we would want and hope from a manufacturer. Now, you know, I will hope, Aaron, I don't mean to target. He's still computer, typing, man. But I think it's really I'm important that if in. reviewers get comments like that, yeah. that they throw those out to the public because that showcases what that brand is really about. Yeah. Right. So that's the other side of this. If you're going to sure. put out a negative review, yeah. you got to be willing to showcase the positives that a brand is willing to do to mm -hmm. overcome and fix those problems. 100%. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's also very important. And I think in the long term, man, that speaks volumes about that brand, yes. their integrity, their character, and just what they stand for. Their desire is to make the best product for the consumer. Now, devil's and advocate it, there, though, because I like to do that is, would that have been fixed if you didn't release the review? Right? So, oh, right, you know, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so mm. not a gray area here or there, but one of the gentlemen here in the chat said that their wife is a litigation attorney. He talked this over with her and said mm -hmm. that the plaintiffs wouldn't have a yeah. chance. In this I case. don't think anybody believes that they do. Yeah, no. You know, it, it's and somebody mentioned earlier. They're like, it's this is a bully tactic, and it sure appears that way. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, let me because I don't even know if there has even been any. I don't know the legality. I don't think there's any proper form sent to Amir or sent to Aaron saying cease and desist or whatever. Well, for what it's worth, we don't even know that Eric threatened litigation against Aaron. Well, what I'm saying, I'm looking at what you read earlier in Amir. With Amir, he did, yeah. Absolutely. With mm -hmm. Amir, yes. yes. But I'm saying yeah. with Aaron, there was never yeah. anything. Yeah, I don't said. know the story there, but, yeah. but I'm looking at, at what he said to Amir and he's like, litigation will ensue mm -hmm. stay tuned and that's like come on man you know yeah i bet amir's over there going bring it buddy i got plenty of money i'll hire my attorney i got let's a clip go, you know let's go to bat i think, I think a big part of that is that they threaten see. litigation because you're gonna have to spend money on lawyers and stuff just to get yeah. the thing thrown out mm -hmm. and it's just if you don't want to deal with it a lot of times it's easier just to take the thing down which is really sad that that yeah. tactic can even yeah. exist yeah and that's that's unfortunate um, it is like siphonics audio says people talk about loving honesty and transparency but only if it makes them look good that's yeah true. you got to be willing to admit when you're wrong yeah and that's okay and here's the reality there's no perfect product i have reviewed countless products speakers amplifiers, receivers, processors, projectors. There's not one single product that was perfect. None. The Never internet would. the internet makes this somebody was saying that cars and stuff you know, there's all these recalls and and things like that. And I can think about a lot of old cars. Man, a lot of old cars were pieces of crap. I mean, <laughs> things falling off and all kinds of problems. I think one of the biggest issues that manufacturers have to deal with now is the world is so interconnected that yeah. if something goes wrong, everyone knows about it everybody knows immediately. immediately. Yeah. So the recalls mm -hmm. on certain things, you know, yeah, maybe you could say that things aren't made as yeah. well. I don't know. I'm just using this as an example. They're True. fixing them, right? At yeah. least. But 
you bought a car in the 60s and something was wrong with it i don't mm -hmm. know if it got fixed mm -hmm. like what happened if the gas cap broke or something you have to go buy yeah. another one instead of a recall being done i took my truck in for a recall they were fixing things i didn't even know was wrong and I got this, it wasn't a huge list. They were like, yeah, if you spill something here, it's porous. It can go down into the computer. I'm like, well, that would have been bad, but they fixed it. Um, mm -hmm. So some of it is just not knowing. Like yeah. you can't expect even the big companies to know everything, though we think they should. Um, but the internet can be dangerous because everybody knows everything very, very quickly, positive yeah. or negative. Sure. So communication and how it's communicated positively or negatively is very important almost more than the subject of that communication mm -hmm. should we get into questions now yeah like i said it's, it's just an it's just something that's super relevant um and we just thought that'd be a, a conversation that really should be had because um like i said I, I don't think this is fair against the content creators those that are reviewing these products you know if there's an issue reach out to them you know, but again, I, I come at it from a, a different perspective too. I come at it from a Christian perspective. If a brother sins against you, if he's done you wrong, you go to him and you have a conversation with him. You figure it out. You see if you can work it out. Then if you can't work it out, you get other people involved. Mm -hmm. But it almost seemed like this was just, nah, forget that dude. You know, <laughs> I don't know. It just, yeah. Great conversation. Appreciate it, man.